Hey, hey, it's me, Big Murph again. In this video, which is part of a two series video, I'll be showing you guys how I install a boost gauge on this here R53 Mini Cooper. Uh, now, before we start the video, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button on this video and save it on your playlist so you can go ahead and review the contents um, as needed. Okay, so I'll be installing this boost gauge made by Bosch here and uh, the reason why I chose this well because it's reasonably priced here compared to all of the other competitors on the market such as an AEM um, and I trust Bosch's uh, workmanship um, even though this boost gauge as you can see here um, is made in China um, you know I really do trust that they uphold their uh, quality control and uh, a lot of modern vehicles today uses Bosch products sensors and even the fuel injectors on many modern cars are made by Bosch and they work perfect without any issues so I trust them and like I said I just need you know, the basic gauge for the function of telling me the boost I'm also going to be installing this dual pod gauge here which is 3D printed and I actually got this off of a seller on eBay and I'll go ahead and throw the links to these two items in the description down below so you can go and check them out I'm in no way affiliated by uh, eBay or any other uh, online shop that I shop at but if I see a good product I'll be sure to go ahead and recommend it okay and so the first thing you want to do is go and remove uh, well if your car has the stock intercooler uh, this plastic shield that goes over the intercooler. This uses a T30 torque socket, so we'll go ahead and start off by removing this. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and remove uh, these bolts that secure down um, the uh, rubber seal that seals the intercooler uh, to these uh, intake ducts of the supercharger. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start removing these here. Uh, this is also a T30 torque socket. The next thing you want to do is remove this rubber coupling here so that way you can access um, a vacuum port that's actually uh, located on the back of the snorkel here of the supercharger. That's where you're going to be tapping in your vacuum line for your boost gauge. So we'll go ahead and remove this out the way. And if we can see behind here, let's see if I can brighten this up for you but there will be a vacuum line and it's kind of hard to see but maybe I can brighten this up a bit and we can get a better view. Okay, and here will be a better view of that um, vacuum line I was telling you about, that port that's right here on the intake manifold that's what you're going to be tapping into um, to hook up your boost gauge so we'll go ahead and insert uh, a T connection right here with about maybe an inch or two of vacuum hose Now to help me gain better access to that vacuum hose, I'm just going to move this black, um, what do you call this, uh, I guess this is like the exhaust perch valve uh, line, uh, or the recirculation line that uh, runs to the gas tank to circulate the gas fumes, I guess. So we'll just go ahead and kind of move this out the way, and that gives us more working room to kind of get into the area where we need to attack, which is right there. Okay, so to feed the vacuum line through the firewall, I'm going to be uh, aiming to get to um, this area here where this red power cable uh, goes right through the rubber grommet there. And that'll be a clean entry for the other side. Now the trick to do that is to tape your vacuum line onto like a long uh, screwdriver. And then you'll just sim simply stick this inside here so you can squeeze it into the grommet. And then when it gets to the other side, you can just pull the vacuum hose from there. So we'll go ahead and fish it out that way. Okay, and so you can see here uh, the vacuum line. Uh, it starts off from here, as I said earlier. And what we did was we connected a T connector right there, as you can see, a rubber T connector. And I have the uh, outlet here of the vacuum line that runs parallel to the fuel rail. And I slipped it right underneath this under uh, this intercooler bracket here, and as you can see, I'm just going to run it alongside uh, this uh, um, 
fuel purge line here, uh, the vent line there for the tank, and I slipped it right behind this plastic uh, piece here. And as you can see, the line goes uh, right into the uh, rubber grommet there for the power cable, and it comes out the other side of the firewall. And then from there, we'll go ahead and feed it through the steering column up to the location of where the gauge will be at. So we'll go ahead and jump there now. Okay, and so for the final few steps, you want to remove this tachometer here, which is basically being held by two T30 Torx screws, which is located right here on the back. As you can see, there's a place for where the screws go. Now be careful because there's washers that are associated with them and if you don't pay attention you can easily drop them and lose them for good so after you remove that then you can move the tachometer out the way and depending on which location your boost gauge is going to go you want to basically route the uh, vacuum line through here so we'll go ahead and do that and once we get that situated then we can mod the pod which will basically go into these two screw holes here as you can see um, and then you'll just place the original screws over the pod mount the pod mount has um, uh, these sort of uh, protrusions here as you can see which insert into the back of the uh, tachometer so that makes it really a uh, secure fit and it's actually ingenious that they did that so We'll go ahead and get to that now, and then we'll give you the finished product when we're done here. Okay guys, I figured it out. So, I read a PDF file from Alta, and uh, they manufacture um, a lot of aftermarket parts, pulleys. I am running their 17% pulley on this car. Uh, for our uh, R53s and, and they also make parts for R56s as well and uh, they have a PDF file detailing uh, installation uh, of their gauge set and they have a little section where it talked about um, wiring for illumination however they did not specify exactly um, what wire um, this gray wire was they said just connect this gray wire here and this is the only gray wire on this connector which connects to your tachometer um, and it's exactly pin number um, let me see if I can zoom in there, pin number four um, if you can see there and um, they didn't say if that was a ground if that was a positive so I had to figure that out on my own and surprisingly enough this wire um, switches from being a ground when the headlight is off to a 12 volt source when the headlight switch is on. So here I'm gonna turn on the headlight switch and you can hear um, the ballast of my Xenon headlights activating. Okay, and um, now you can see here as I tap this wire that I'm getting, um, well, let me just fix this lead here really quick, um, 12 volts, there you go. And here I'm gonna again switch off the headlight. So here, as you can see, the headlight is just switched on to the first position. And as I switch it uh, off, boom, it's dead. So that is uh, where basically we're gonna be tapping into as a positive source, this pin number four uh, that connects to the tachometer. It's a gray with a red wire. And you'll have to find a ground source um, and I could just use this brown with black one um, because this is a ground. So, um, in fact, I'm going to test that out right now. Just give me one second here so I can verify that with you guys. Okay, so um, let's go and test this out here and see if this will work. So, again, headlight is off. Zero volts. Headlight turn on. Boom. 12 volts. So you will be connecting, uh, basically you'll be tapping into these two wires for your light source for any of your uh, gauges that you put in your car, whether it be an oil pressure gauge will be the next one I'll be putting in, or uh, an AFR gauge, which is the next gauge I'm also putting in. Uh, the, like I said, let's review this. So the gray with the red stripe will be your positive. The black, I'm sorry, the brown with the black stripe will be your negative. And I hope that helps you guys out, all right? Thank you very much. and. Uh, we will show you the final product once I finally wire the lights for this and secure everything back up nice and neat. 
Okay, and so when you're done installing the boost gauge, go ahead and reinstall your intercooler assembly. In my case, I upgraded here to this GP inspired intercooler that I got off of eBay for under $80 brand new. And it has a nice coating here, a protective coating on it, and it's larger than the original intercooler, uh, which was my main objective in upgrading the intercooler. And so I don't need anything fancy as long as it works. And don't forget to reconnect anything that you disconnected, like this evaporative return line here, or any of these other vacuum connections here. And double check your work to make sure that you know everything is routed and there's no cracks in the pipe. Otherwise you will have a severe vacuum leak. Okay here guys, so here's the finished product. Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate to you, I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but um, right now the uh, backlight is not on. And when I switch on the uh, headlights, you can see the backlight will turn on. There you go. And I'll turn off the headlight and you can see it disappear. Now, when uh, reinstalling your tachometer, it is going to be a tight fit with the uh, plastic base there, as you can see. That's because you have the extra power uh, cable that's running from the gauge uh, that's tapping into the tachometer. And so it does have a tight fit back there. And another thing I want to point out to you is that when you install the uh, tachometer, it is going to be somewhat of a tricky uh, fitting the torque screws back here. Um, the clearance is very tight with the uh, dual pod setup. As you can see, it does kind of stick out a little bit towards the dash a little bit, which decreases the space that you cannot put in a standard uh, torque socket set back there. So you kind of have to use either like a long handle flathead screwdriver that I used, or you can use a dedicated uh, um, torque screwdriver, a T30 torque screwdriver, um, to be able to put back those torque screws. Um, otherwise, it'll be difficult with just your standard uh, socket set. Now I'm going to demonstrate now that everything is working. So let me go ahead and switch on the car and you can see. And there you can see we're pulling vacuum at idle. All right. And here you can see that everything is functioning. Alright, and uh, I'm going to do a third gear pull in just a second here, and we'll see what kind of levels that we get for the boost. Okay, here's a third gear pull. Okay, you guys, so I hope you found this video to be helpful and maybe giving you some insight on how to install a boost, mechanical boost gauge, should I say, on this R53 Mini Cooper. Um, be sure to like the video and subscribe to keep up with some of my uh, upcoming videos on other gauges I will be installing. And as well, uh, leave a comment down below if you found something that could be helpful for the community. Um, thank you very much and have a good day.